we are going to witness the confirmation, the reception of the gifts of the Holy Spirit of our young people who have undergone two years of preparation, confirmation one and two. And uh, we're glad that they're, they're here with us, in spite and despite of the uncertainty and the difficulties that the situation uh, has brought into their circumstance that uh, before they even truly finish their program, we had to do isolation and a stay-at-home order. And yet, we are very glad for these young people who are present here. I will be calling your name, and as I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Diego Tarin, Dominic Cameron Young, Isabella Osorio, Vanessa Lara, Raul Avalos, Melissa Bahena, Jacqueline Salgado, Gianna Marie Alarcon, Noemi Romo, and Giovanni David Valadares. Did I not, did I forget anybody? Okay, so. Thank you very much for being here. I'd like to give our appreciation and congratulations to all these 10 people who are here with us. And uh, one of uh, Liana Mar's program has a sister, your sisters, right? I guess right. So has a sister who's also receiving First Communion and she is here with us. Let's all ask her to please stand and to give her appreciation and congratulations. And when the program got interrupted, we entrusted the continuation of the program to our parents guided by the catechists and our coordinators. I'd like the catechists and the sponsors also to please stand. Thank you. Please stand. Thank you for your efforts in making sure your children progress in this journey of faith. And uh, while they're all standing, I'd like to also appreciate our youth coordinator, our assistant, uh, youth coordinator, Emmanuel, his assistant, Alicia, and our catechists who are here. Thank you very much because you've given of yourselves to this program. And if you should know, they are already preparing for this coming year. And it's since uh, the situation still is challenging, everything is going to be online and via Zoom and virtual. So we thank the efforts of all those who give up themselves. And now, let us all stand. Let's take a moment to acknowledge each other's presence in this celebration. Turn to the person beside us, behind us, wave. Say hi, bienvenidos. We welcome Father John. You may not see him, but he's tall enough to be seen from behind. He's celebrating with us. Let's take a moment now to move into the silence of our hearts as we bow our heads. And for a moment, in silence, acknowledge the presence of God and be one gathering together our prayers, maybe one mind and one heart in lifting up to the Lord all our intentions, especially praying for those who are suffering because of the situation and those who are continually serving the needy, the sick, those in harm's way.
we begin our celebration recognizing Jesus the Messiah, especially in His great act of love and offering of Himself on the cross. We begin with this sign of love, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Gathered together in this celebration, like St. Peter, may we humble ourselves to recognize and accept who we are and allow the mercy and compassion and grace of God to transform us. You send your spirit to renew the whole world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You establish your everlasting church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, and as we pause for a few moments of silence, let us also bring to mind the prayers of those who are joining our worship and celebration through live stream, those who are confined to their homes, that we may unite ourselves together in worship. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. And when he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a, sh in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and, his, uh, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever, amen. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Thomas, today in our midst are candidates who have prepared and are ready to receive the fullness of Christian initiation by the sacrament of confirmation. Each candidate has been well instructed and it is accompanied by a sponsor. It is my privilege to present them to you at this time. I invite the candidates for confirmation to please stand. We applaud and congratulate your efforts to be able to reach to this day and your openness to God's grace that has accompanied you together with all those who have been part of your journey. Congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause for knowledge. You may now be seated. A woman had a dream one night and she dreamt that she died. And she found herself on the pearly gates of heaven, face to face with St. Peter. And when she saw St. Peter, she said, You know what, St. Peter? You ought to bring me to heaven. I deserve heaven. And, and St. Peter said, Why do you deserve heaven? And he said, Look at my hands. I haven't done anything wrong. They're clean. See? And St. Peter looked at her hands and said, Oh yeah, you're right. They're clean. And you even had a new set of manicure. But, St. Peter said, They're empty. When you come to Mass, when we come to church, what do we bring? Do we bring a heart that is longing to meet our Lord Jesus? Do we bring a begrudging heart that says, okay, let's get it over and done with? Or do we just come here because we want to fulfill an obligation on our checklist and to make sure that, of course, coming here, we will be assured that we won't be spending our time in the smoking section, right, of eternity? But why do we come here? And more importantly, after we've come here, whatever it is that we bring to the Eucharist, what do we take back? What do I bring with me from the table of the Lord's loving sacrificial meal? From the, 
from the table in which His living word is spoken to us. What do I bring with me? What do I take with me? And how will this happen? In the gospel today, I'd like you to picture this. Jesus was traveling with his apostles and they reached a town or a city called Caesarea Philippi. And when they got there, they probably were just recuperating from their travel. And Jesus asked them a question, so who do people say that I am? And as I was reflecting on this and reflecting on our celebration today about confirmation, I was imagining like uh, uh, pre-COVID days when a, when a teenager or somebody was going back home or a preteen would come back from school and the parents will ask them a question, how are you, right? My friend says, you know, when my kids turned teenager, they got sick with single-nitis. What is single-nitis? Single syllable. How was school? Good. How are you? Fine. Right? And that's it. But you see them on their text message, you see them on their Twitter, you see them on their Instagram. They're very expressive. But the question is, when I come to the Eucharist as well, am I as expressive? Am I as open? Am I as eager and curious to find out what God has in store for me? So when Jesus asked that question, the the disciples were probably grumbling from the travel and said, it's probably as hot as this is and as humid. And they were saying, oh, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say you're other, one of the other prophets of the, of the people of Israel, which is not a bad answer at all. It was not an insult. To be compared to John the Baptist and Elijah was something really well and good. But finally, Jesus drove further the question and say, but you... Who do you say that I am? And to which all the other disciples, when confronted with something profound, with something important, probably all bow their heads, right? And if I will ask the question now, what verse and chapter in the Matthew's gospel do we find the answer of Peter? And if I will ask now our confirmandi, most of our confirmandi will look somewhere else or look down. Suddenly, they will be very interested in their nails. And perhaps all the disciples were like that. Until finally, St. Peter prayed in his heart and said, You know, I've made many mistakes, but I hope I get the right answer. And he opened himself to the Spirit and said, You are the Son, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah. And finally, Jesus said, this does not come from you. It is a gift that you receive from God. But you were able to receive that gift because you were open to the grace and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Where my dear young people, this afternoon, the Holy Spirit would like to provide you and give you a gift. In fact, gifts of grace that if you will review later, what these gifts are, and, and the prayer card that we will give to you. And if you just hunker down and truly be real with Jesus, be real with God, be honest with Him, and look at the gifts that you will be receiving and pray for the grace that you need for whatever situation you find yourself in, then like St. Peter, you will be receiving that inspiration. And you, in your lives, will be able to proclaim who Jesus is. And it's the same thing for all of us. Every time we gather at the Eucharist, we know that we have our own situations, life situations, problems, concerns, things in our mind, things in our hearts that we bring every time we gather. And Jesus says, come, bring it to me. But then open your heart so that the Spirit may be able, my Spirit may be able to reach out to you and you can take with you the same grace and blessing that St. Peter received when he was given the task by God to be the head of the church. And this is where, as a church, as the Catholic faith, as a Catholic church, we trace our leadership from St. Peter down to the very Pope that we have today, 
we have that entrust, entrusting grace of Jesus to take care of the keys of the kingdom. And this is how we are reminded in our own lives to always follow the example of St. Peter. Why was St. Peter called? He was not the best of the apostles. In fact, if love was the, was the qualification to be the leader of the church, it would be John the Beloved, right? Because he was always there. If financial acumen was the was or administration perhaps was the qualification, then Matthew would have made it because he was a tax collector. He was in a position of power. But then Jesus chose Peter. And what was going for Peter why God chose him? His openness, his willingness to learn, his humility. If you read the gospel stories and you find out the stories about St. Peter, you realize how many times he made mistakes. And yet, she was open for change. We are reminded that if we are willing to change, then we are able to be transformed by the Holy Spirit, by God's grace. That we, like St. Peter, can only can not only answer who is Jesus for us, but our lives will show the difference or what it means of who Jesus is in our lives and how we relate with Jesus in our lives. The question we ask ourselves is how does our faith affect the way we live? How does the gift of the Holy Spirit affect the grace, the way you will be living to those who shall be receiving the sacrament of confirmation, how will the grace of the Holy Spirit make a change in your life and in the lives of others? Will you be willing, like St. Peter, to testify? Will you not be afraid to put, for example, in your hashtag, hashtag confirmed, hashtag gift of the Holy Spirit, will you be able to testify and witness to others and live and do the right thing, even if it's difficult, even if it is hard, especially during this day and age? And it's the same thing for all of us. When we open ourselves and proclaim who Jesus is in our lives, then it should affect the way we live. When we open ourselves to Jesus and when we proclaim who he is, the Messiah, then we open ourselves to his guidance and to his spirit living in us. Sometimes it is difficult, but it is never impossible. There are days and moments I remember when I was a seminarian. One of those days and moments I really felt so down and out. And I really was in a circumstance that I did not want to find myself in, that I decided to run away from the seminary. I literally jumped the fence. And I was running away until one of the senior seminarians caught up with me and said, before you go, I'd like you to just come to the chapel. And there we have a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Just kneel before Our Lady. If you cannot talk to Jesus, talk to His mother. And maybe after talking to His mother, you can talk to Jesus. So I went to the chapel, I knelt down, and I said, Mom, Mary, I don't think I'm cut out for this life. I don't think I can survive given the things that I'm experiencing right now. But please, help me. Just guide me. So I stopped a while, and all I ever heard in my heart, the statue did not speak, because if the statue opened its mouth, I will be running away from the chapel. But in my heart, as I closed my eyes, I just heard our Blessed Mother Mary tell, say these words, I love you, and my son loves you more than I. Just listen to him. And I stopped. And there's just one word that I heard. Stay. 
And with that one word, I kept repeating it to myself that whole night of struggle. And that was more than 40 years ago. No, 35 years ago. 40 years, I'll be too young. 35 years ago. And it was a difficult situation. No, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, I'm 55 now. Sorry about the math. But more than 40 years ago, when I knelt at the chapel, and sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes we come with our hands full of the burdens that we carry for the whole week and the day. Maybe frustration, exhaustion, anger, desperation, discouragement. Bring it to our Lord and stay for a while. And all we'll hear are words that says, no matter what you bring to me, that it will never change my love for you. And all I would give you is the gift of my love, my grace, and my spirit. So as we gather at the Eucharist, let us continue to touch our Lord Jesus and allow him to touch our lives, that like St. Peter, we may be transformed, that like our first reading, we may be like Eliakim, one that was chosen by God, transformed by God's grace, that we may be reminded by what St. Paul told to the Romans, that for him, through him, and from him comes all power, grace, and glory. So let's pray now, especially for those who are about to be confirmed, their parents, their sponsors. Let us bring lovingly in our hands our lives to Jesus and take from this celebration the life-giving grace, the love, especially his real presence in the Eucharist. And let's make this prayer to our Lord and Savior. Lord, we touch you today. Lord, we touch you today. You gave us your life. You gave us your love. Lord, we touch you today. Lord, we give you our hearts. Lord, we give you our hearts. You gave us your life. You gave us your love. Lord, we give you our hearts. To live is to die and to laugh is to cry. To live is to love with all our hearts. To live is to walk and to talk in your words. And to live is to sing in your love. And to live is to sing in your love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. like to invite our young people to be confirmed and their sponsors to please stand. At your baptism, your parents and godparents on your behalf profess their faith. Today, we ask you to renew those promises and I would please respond, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? We need a more convincing answer. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried and rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today to the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? 
Dear friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it with Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And dear friends who are gathered here with us, let us pray to God Almighty Father for this, His adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that He will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with His abundant gifts and through His anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought this, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. of St. Angela of the Cross be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit peace be with you and with your spirit Isabella of St. Clair of Assisi be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit peace be with you and your spirit Giovanni of St. Joseph be sealed Spirit. Peace be with you. Noemi of Elizabeth and Sidon, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jacqueline of St. Philomena, be sealed. Peace be with you. Dominic of Saint Dominic, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Diana of Saint Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Vanessa of St. Hilda of Whitby, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And let us now all stand for the prayers of the faithful. Dear friends, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from His Holy Spirit, are one. For these, His servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and their sponsors, that by word and example they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis our Pope, Kevin, our bishop, along with the bishops Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow and increase in the unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in our hearts for our families and our loved ones. We pray for the intentions for whom this Mass is being offered, for the eternal repose of the souls of Chuck Goebel, Diego Zabala, and Tiffany Taule. We include all the intentions we have received, especially praying for the health, strength, of Virginia Othley, Brian Carbonell, Lillian Jans, Lori Kintz, and Il Dilberto Joaquin. We remember our dearly departed, Jason Carbonell, Monica Jane Asilo, John Harrell, Lorenzo Laguda Laure, Ruperta Almarines, Kathleen Sofka, and Jackie Aquino. And we include all the prayers we have placed in our Ark of Prayer chest, as well as those in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and wielded through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayers and grant that your divine grace, which was at work with the gospel, when it was first proclaimed, now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our youth who have been confirmed will deposit or place their letters to Jesus in the Ark of Prayer chest. We may now be seated. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a, whole, a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin. 
so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Kindly kneel or be seated reverently. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Santiago de Compostela, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Kindly kneel or be seated reverently. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Together with those who are praying with us and worshiping with us through the live stream, let us now pray a prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
We will now have our second collection. And this collection will be to support all the missionary efforts of the church throughout the world. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. For being the last Sunday of the month, fourth Sunday of the month, we call upon all those who are expecting for a blessing, are there expecting parents here? None? Okay. No surprise. Okay. So, <laughs> let's now remember to pray for all those who are expecting, even especially for those who are joining us through live stream, to pray for them and lift them to the Lord. Gracious Father, your words spoken in love created the human family, and in the fullness of time, your son, conceived in love, restored it to your friendship. Hear the prayers of these parents who await the birth of their child. Calm their fears when they are anxious. Watch over and support these parents and bring their child into the world safely and in good health so that as members of your family, they may praise you and glorify you to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray to our spiritual mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast unto hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
once again, congratulations. May I ask you to please be seated. Those who wish to receive communion by the mouth, we shall have a line in here. 